All right, what's going on YouTube, poker family? We are back with another video, but first I wanna say thank you to everybody. We are officially at 1K, it's only up from here. Definitely wanna say a special thank you to the people that I've seen at MGM, the dealers, the players, etc. that told me that you like my videos and to keep on posting. And um, I was stuck at 900 subscribers for a while because I haven't been posting, obviously. And just the last video got me up to 1K. So I appreciate everybody for sure. I will be doing some sort of giveaway. So comment on a hand and like the video and put MB at the end of your comment to let me know you wanna enter into the giveaway. I don't know exactly when it'll be. It'll be sometime, probably at the end of this month, I'll announce the winners of the giveaway. But I um, appreciate everybody. So let's just get right to the hands. Let's go. Okay, so starting up this session, we are in the hijack with nine, 10 of diamonds. There's a $6 straddle. Two people call before it gets to me. So I decided to bump this up to 30. I'm really just planning on taking down the dead money, but I do have a nice hand to go to the flop in case I do get called. And I only get called by the small blind and the low jack to my right. So now we are off three ways to a flop, which comes four, seven, ten. So it is a rainbow board and we do have top pair. Obviously my kicker is very mediocre, but nonetheless, when it checks to me, I decide to bet 55 into a pot of about 100, just a touch more than half pot. I think that's a decent size bet for where we're at. I do have a vulnerable hand to over cards, so I wanna kinda of price out those over cards. So that's the best sizing that I choose on. And the small blind gets out of the way and the low jack to my right decides to call. So now we're off to a turn, which comes the five of clubs, puts on a flush draw on the board now. So when I'm thinking about what I should do, I have about 220 in my stack now and the pot is around 210. So I could either make a small bet and jam the river or check the river depending on what comes or I can just go all in right now. Seeing as that it's a good chance I could have the best hand with top pair, I decide to take the higher variance route and I go all in right now. All in? It's going to look bluffy if he has, let's say, a seven or like pocket eights. It's going to look pretty bluffy if I go all in like this. He wouldn't think that an over pair would play like that. At least I don't think he would. So he thinks about it for a second. And the longer that he's thinking, I'm actually getting happier and happier because he could just have a better 10, of course. So... The result is he decides to put in the call, and so we're off to a river, which is another 10. So we make trips on the river. It should definitely be good. And when I show my hand, he actually stops for a second, and he's like, wow, I didn't think you would raise with 9, 10. But my hand is good. He acts like I needed the river. I don't really know what hand I would need another 10 on to win, because he would have snap called me when I went all in on the turn if he had two pair, and any set would have made a full house. But you know, in live poker, people just say little things. You can't take it to heart. So we win a huge pot. The pot ends up being a monster one of $600. So that's a great way to start the session. Now let's take this momentum and try to run it up. Thank you. Well, we had good luck with the last two to connect us, so now we have another one. We have seven, eight of spades. We're on the big blind. There's a cutoff race to 15. I decided to call. Middle position and a low jack decided to call as well. So now we are off to a flop, which is four ways, and it is nine, five, four. So we have a gut shot, and there's one spade on the board. So essentially, we have a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. So now the middle position player decides to dunk out for 35. The cutoff goes all in. I look at it and it's only 25. So now I'm getting an even better price to call to hit my gut shot and back door. So I decided to peel and I decided to put in the money. And the turn, unfortunately, it is a card that breaks out for us. It's a heart. And now the heart flush draw gets there. So now when middle position decides to bet 75, I have to put in the fold and it does get the showdown and the donker ends up having seven nine suited so they had top pair and decided just to go with it and they win the pot but anyways we're off to the next hand so making a step up from suited connectors we have suited broadways we have king queen of clubs and now we decide to raise to 15 under the gun our plus two opponent decides to call small blind and the big blind decide to call so we are all four ways to the flop, which comes king, eight, six. So I decided to bet out for 35, 
and only the big blind decides to put in the call. The same guy from the 9, 10 of diamonds, by the way. So the turn is a 9. So on this board, it's a pretty connected card. It did go really multi-way. So I decided to put in a check, and the river is a jack. So now he decides to put out a bet of 75, and I'm actually very troubled by that bet. There's multiple two-pair combinations, straight combinations. And when I think about it, what hand do I beat? If he's not bluffing, he would have to have a king that didn't hit two-pair, which would be like king 10. That would pretty much be it. So unfortunately, I decide to stick in the call, and he shows that he has jack 8. So he flopped the pair. He called my first bet. The turn checked through, so then he made two pair on the river. Now, my question to you all is, do you think that I should have put in a, another bet on the turn, or do you think that checking through sometimes is pretty standard? Obviously, seeing the result, I wish I would have bet because I know he would have folded. But go ahead and leave a comment right there and let me know what you think about that play. But we have to move on to another hand, and let's see if we can get some of this money back. Moving right along, we are in the button with a very much premium just kidding we just have five nine of clubs but either way when there's a couple limps in front of me i decide to raise it up to 15. only the middle position players decide to call two of them so we're going three ways to a flop which comes king two three with two hearts so initially the first middle position player decides to start off with a check and the other one decides to make a donk play of 15. Now, normally when players donk out, it's either a weak top pair or it's a flush draw. I'm blocking the top pair part of that, so I'm putting him on a flush draw. So now I just decided to raise it up to 45. I'm almost certain that he has a flush draw, so I think that's the most appropriate play to do. So he calls, and the turn is a queen of spades. So, of course, once again, the flush draw breaks out. But now I'm going to really put the pressure. See how much he wants to call with a flush draw. I don't want to give him a good price to hit. So I decided to bomb it for 85, and he ends up showing that he had a 9-high flush draw. So I think that was a pretty good read by me here to address the situation right and not just let him get a flush on his own price. So if you would have got there with me pricing him out of it, then that's fine. But sometimes you got to just make the read and understand the situation that you're in because normally donks aren't very strong. He's not going to do that with a set. He's going to try to go for the check raise more times than not. So... That was a good hand, and that ends up being the last hand of this session, but we have another session that we get into the very next day. So let's see what happens. Okay, so the first hand of this session, we are on the button with pocket A's. There's an under the gun raise to 10, and when it gets to me, I could be raising it up, seeing as that's such a weak opening raise size, but I just decided to call off my first hand, and a big blind decides to come along with us. So we're off to a flop, which is very beautiful. Ace, eight, nine. So we flop bottom set with an ace high board, but unfortunately it decides to check to me and i just decide that i should just check back because if somebody had an ace they would have bet it there are a couple straight draws but there's no flush draws to go along with it so anyways the turn is a two of diamonds so once again it checks to me so now i know nobody really has nothing but there is a diamond flush draw on the board so i decide to bet out for 10 and now the big blind decides to call so off to the river which is a six some weird straight draws get there, but either way, to me, it's pretty much a brick. So I'm not going to bet that large. I'm just going to bet out for 25, and unfortunately, the big blind decides to fold. But nonetheless, it's always great to flop a set. It always makes you feel like you're running hot. So we're going to take this momentum to the very next hand. So we're on the big blind with king-queen offsuit. There's a cutoff race to 15. The button calls, and here, I definitely should be putting a three bet here, seeing as there's a call in between. But unfortunately, I take the passive route and I just decide to put in a call. And when I call, the low jack also calls. So now we're off to a flop, which comes ace, queen, seven. Obviously, I have middle pair, but still the ace out there. Somebody could definitely have one. So I check and it actually ends up checking all the way around. So now I'm discounting anyone from having an ace, seeing as everyone checked. And now when the turn is a five, I decide to bet out for 20. And the low jack decides to raise me to 60. I think about it for a second, and most of the time, these turn raises into everyone is not going to be a bluff. So I just decided to lay it down, and he shows he had 5-7 suited. So once again, I think I need to start taking more aggressive routes and 3-betting way more than I'm doing. So that would have got a lot of people to fold, and I probably would have just won all the money right then and there. So that's a lesson to learn for the next hand and for the rest of my playing career, but just 
being more aggressive is always the way to win in poker, especially the more you're going into like these uh, low stakes where everyone's playing so passively. But anyway, lesson learned. Let's go to the next hand where we can try to make it back. So this hand is actually very interesting. So we have pocket queens under the gun. I raised to 20 because there is a straddle. The plus two decides to put in the call and the straddle decides to call. So now we are off to a flop, which comes seven, eight, ten. And obviously we have an over pair, but the straddle leads for 20. Now I could be putting in a raise here, but with somebody behind me as well, I'm just going to put in the call and see what develops. So when I call, the other player decides to get out the way. So now we're just going heads up to the turn, which is a five of club, and it does bring in a draw. So now when he bets 25, I definitely think I should be putting in a raise here because now it just seems like he has a nine and is trying to name his own price to hit it straight. But nonetheless, I just decided to call. And now the river is an eight of club. So that's a beautiful card because it does reduce some of the two pair combinations. And it also means that if he had any other two pair, I am now beating it. So when he checks, now I know he doesn't have anything. So I don't want to bet big, seeing as that if he had top pair or trips, he definitely would have bet. So I just decided to bet 35, just targeting maybe a top pair. And he ends up folding very quickly, and he claims that he had a 9, which does make perfect sense. But either way, glad to be winning the pot. Let's see if we can catch some more premiums. Very next hand, would you look at that? Pocket Queens. It's almost like I knew what I was going to get before I got it. But anyways... We raise it up to $20, and we get two callers, and the flop is queen, four, two. Now, there's two clubs on the board, so I'm going to start off with a check. And when I check, the player in middle position decides to put out a bet of 20. And when it gets to me, I'm going to put in a raise immediately, and I raise it up to 100. And she actually ponders the decision for quite a while. But then she ends up deciding to put in the fold. I don't know if she had a flush draw or just had a weaker pair or something like that. But I think that maybe the check raise was a good play. But I want you to leave a comment. Do you think on this hand I should have just went bet bet? Or do you think the check raise was a good option here with the nuts? Let me know. All right. So now we are looking down at a very beautiful king queen of spades. We raise it up to 20. And we get three callers. So the flop comes seven nine dudes there's one space so i do got two overs and a backdoor draw actually two backdoor draws because i technically could hit a straight as well so i decided to put in a check and it ends up checking all the way around see the reason why i checked is because since we're going four ways somebody could have a very strong hand and want to blow us off of our backdoor equity and plus even if i did have aces i probably would start off with a check being in an early position as well so I check and it checks around and the turn now is a seven of spades. So it pairs the middle card, but now it does give us a flush draw with two overs. So now I'm going to put out a bet of 35 once the small blind decides to check the me. And the $35 bet was just enough to get everyone to fold and we take down the pot with king high. All right, so the last hand of the session I didn't get to record. So we're sitting in the big blind with nines in the clubs. It folds around to the button. He's a 2-5 regular player, so sometimes he could be getting out of line. But he does raise it up to $20. The small blind calls, and being that this is already to be my last hand, I decided just to call with nine ten of clubs. I could be putting in a 3-bet knowing he could just be bullshitting. But as played, I decided to put in the call, and we're off to a flop, which comes king, seven, three, all clubs. So yes, we flop a flush, and a decent flush at that. So... It checks around to the pre-flop razor as you would expect, and he decides to put in a bet of 25. And on that $25 bet, the small blind decides to call. So now, sitting with a flush, I'm not going to play around. I decide to raise it up to 105 immediately, and that gets the button to fold, but for some reason, the small blind decides to come along. So now I'm thinking he probably just has the ace of club, because I think if he had a set at this point with me raising, he'll just go with his hand. So... We're off to a turn, which comes the Jack of Diamonds. It changed nothing. I still have a flush. So when he checks to me, I decide to totally bomb it because it seems like he really wants to chase it. So I bet 185, and essentially he tells me that he has the Ace of Club and he's feeling lucky. So he thinks about it for a second, and obviously I believe he has the Ace of Club. So it's going to be really easy to play the river. So he finally decides to stick in the call, and the river, I'm standing in my head, nine of heart, nine of heart. Is the nine of hearts. So the board doesn't pair. There's no fourth club. So I'm sitting here with a clean flush. 
So when he texted me, he only has about 200 left. And this could be a mistake, but I decided just to rip it all in. But I really did believe he had the Ace of Club and he might have had a pair to go with it. So maybe I should just put out a little small ass bet of 50 because then he would have been obligated to call because at that point, he's already put in $300 into the pot. So to bet 50, he almost would have to see it. But um, as played, he folds and we win a monster pot. And now I'm going to go to the outro where we're going to talk about the total winnings for the session. Okay, so now to go over the numbers. In the first part, the first session, we were up $125. And in the second session, we were up 825. So that's a total win of 950 between the two sessions. The total playing time between those two sessions was about seven hours. So that equates to about $135 an hour across those two sessions. So obviously, pretty good result. I appreciate y'all for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Because of everybody, I'm uploading more frequently. And because of that, we're going to run this thing up. Man, I appreciate seeing everybody at MGM. Uh, remember, if you ever go to MGM or you're in the area, just um, look at my telegram in the description and you will be able to find me. So I'm signing out and until next video, holla.